Good morning, everybody. Welcome back to the channel and welcome back to Hike in the Wainwright. It is so good to be back out here. Now moved on to the Far Eastern Fells and today's walk starts on a boat. Yay! Can I get a, a single to Howtown? Yeah. Yeah. That's great, thanks. So the idea of today is to walk from Howtown back to Glenridden, which is where I've parked today, but via Placefell up there. First part of the, the day today is to get on the Ullswater steamer and get over to Howtown. Tell you what, let's go and have a look at the map and see exactly where we're going today. So from Glenridding, I'm going to be steaming towards Howtown with the majority of the route on the right hand side of the boat. Really beautiful way to start the walk actually. But now it is time to walk. So from Howtown, I'm going to head up to Martindale Church and then up to Hallin Fell, where the views will open up in all directions. Then from there, I'm going to drop down back to the church again and head over towards Sanic. This next section is pretty steep, it takes me up to Sleep Fell. From the top of here, I'll be heading over towards High Dodd, probably going to go around it, and then over Low Moss, over towards the Night and finally up to Placefell itself before dropping down to Bordale Hawes. After which it's a fairly gentle stroll back down towards Patterdale and a bimble back into Glenridding and of course the van and pub. We have over 160 years of history sailing on England's most beautiful lake. Thank you. Thank you. Cheers. See you. Right, here we are in Howtown. Let's just wave goodbye to the boat. Back off to Glenridden. Uh, but we're off up to Hallin Fell, which is just behind these trees here. Can't really see it, unfortunately. I tell you what, I'm glad I'm moving because just sitting there on that boat, I got really cold. As lovely as it was on the boat, and what a great way to start a walk, by the way. Definitely recommend it. It's nice to actually get moving and get the blood pumping. Really chuffed to be back out, really excited. It feels like ages since that last episode. Well, it was, it was three months ago since I filmed it. And it's very different weather now. That was back end of August. So it's still quite warm, but it was changing. You know, there's a lot of inversion going on and it's it definitely cooling off. Flipping out, that boat's miles away already. Pretty quick. <laughs> Speedboat. Uh, but today is very cold. As you can see, I'm all rugged up. It's supposed to be about four degrees at the top with the wind chill, because it is quite a breezy day today. It's probably going to be around about zero, maybe minus one or something like that. So yeah, it's going to be a little bit different. But yeah, how gorgeous is this place? Look at it. Okay, I think this is the path. Just need to double check on the map. Path of Del Sanic, I think that's probably the way. Uh, I'm just going to check on the map because I, I just want to make absolutely sure because I don't want to head off in some ridiculous direction and be completely wrong. Okay, I can confirm this is the way. I was having a quick check, 
before disaster strikes. <sighs> anyway, let's get a bit further around to that south side track that's opposite the church. Let's see what we can see from there. It's great to be back. It's great to have you guys back. So literally a couple of minutes after that gate, you can see the views are opening up already behind. Really beautiful looking north towards Pooley Bridge. Very nice. I love these trees. Oh, I'm out of breath. <laughs> it'll, it'll take about six episodes to get my fitness back, I think. So until then, you just have to put up with me. Uh, puffing and panting. That's really nice to see. Group of kids there out on an adventure with school, maybe, I don't know. And there's another group just up here doing some bouldering. The next generation of outdoors people, our kind of people. Look at it, 10 minutes, 10 minutes, and you're getting this. Okay, already at the point where I'll start to ascend Hallen Fell itself. So I'll be kind of coming back down sort of the same way, slightly over that way, a little bit more to the south. I'm going to try and stick to the north as much as possible and look down to Howe Town before heading back around onto the summit. Look at those trees there. How flipping gorgeous is that? It really is. Could be some good shots today if I get my camera out. So as we move up the fell, we can start to see the rest of the route ahead. So going over to Place Fell, right there, look. Okay, so the summit is just there, but I'm gonna head this side first and have a look down onto Ullswater on the other side. But <laughs> look behind, it's crazy. The crossroads to the summit, like I said, we're going to this little knob here. You can see a bit of old water already. I think a minute ago I could see a little Mel Fell. Difficult to tell um, from this angle, but I think it was. I'll go and check it out. Oh yeah, that's nice. Oh, that's very nice. And I bet this is frequented less than the summit. Lovely. That is Little Melfell over there. Let's get on to the summit because time is a serious factor today, or certainly daylight anyway. I mean, walking in the dark isn't a problem, but filming in the dark is. But look at that, isn't it just, ah, oh, it's beautiful. And wait till we get to the summit because all this stuff in the foreground here, we're obviously in a little bit of a depression here now, will disappear and uh, we'll get full unobscured views. Let's go and check out the obelisk. Yeah, see what the views are like and then push on because like I said, time is of the essence. I don't believe it. I've hit a bog already. Yeah, I wasn't expecting that, but it was okay. Again, making epic dramas out of nothing. Okay, just getting to the summit, but first I'm going to get over to this little cairn here. It's quite cute. Not bad. Half an hour from the pier. Okay, let's get on up to the summit. So you can see the obelisk there, look, and you can see some people stood next to it. Gives you a sense of scale. Now, I was gonna get the drone out today for all you drone fans. I've got a new one. I thought today would be a great day to have its first flight, but it's just too windy. There's no way I'm getting my brand new drone up in this wind, so. I'm really sorry, unfortunately, it's gonna have to wait until there's a nil wind situation going on. Now that would be an epic shot. Let's get over here. Let's have a look down Bannerdale and uh, Bordale. Because what we can see very clearly from here is the whole of Bordale 
heading right up to Bordil Halls, which is where I'll be later on actually. So I'll be dropping off Place Fell down to Bordil Halls. Could you imagine this in winter when there's snow on the ground, you've got a little bit of light coming through hitting the ground. I mean, you can see it over there on the nab, it's just trying to get a little bit of shaft arch there, but it's not, not quite uh, coming through. Very thick cloud at the moment. Beautiful fell, beautiful views in all directions. Some great shots of just people <laughs> just on their own. It would have been wonderful to get the drone up, but yeah, not to be, not today, but I will get it out on, on some other future episode, I do promise. Right, let's get on. If you're liking this video, please give it a thumbs up because all the likes make a big difference to a small channel like this. You have no idea how important likes are. It's a big deal. It's gotta be said, this is a very, very nice path to walk down. This here, incidentally, this little hill here is called Paikawasa. I love that name. It's gotta be one of the best names in the lakes. It's like Swahili, Nisawasa, Paikawasa, Hakuna Matata. Brilliant. Oh boy, really overheating now. Too many layers on. Just getting to the bottom of Hallenfell. It's a church just here. I'm going to have to disrobe a little bit because there's a steep pull up sleep fell, the beginning part of the next section of the walk. Now then, look at that for a potential shot. You can park here and get this shot. I mean, look at the walls. That is stunning. So, now heading down to the road and following that for a little bit to the beginning of uh, Sleep Fell. Oh, I'll tell you what, I feel better now <laughs> taking that jacket off. It's amazing how warm you get in that. Such a thin piece of material, but very effective at keeping you warm. That's the Prima Loft. That's that Rab one away. I mean, it looks a little bit like a shell suit. I remember Harry Enfield and uh, Paul Whitehouse in the 90s with the Scousers and the shell suits. <laughs> right, look at this. Look at it. You can imagine it in full autumn raiment around here. And so quiet. I mean, there's obviously quite a lot of people going up Hallenfell there, but I don't reckon I'll see that many people from now on on the rest of the route. It's a bit of an unusual route, this one. I think a lot of people get the, the boat, the steamer, sorry, to Howe Town and then walk back to Glen Ridding along the shoreline, which is lovely. Look at this. That's from the holiday, surely crummy girly film <laughs> that I really like. So we're heading towards Sanic. We don't want to be going down there because, well, we'll be skip skipping out the fell that we want to go up. Just thought I'd give you a moment there without me yip yapping to enjoy that. This water seems very high at the moment. Oh, Ooh, nearly. <laughs> that was very close. Oh, this little fluffy white one on the end here, look. That is very cute. Oh, you're a little cutie, aren't you? Not so sure. Don't blame you. Gorgeous. Look at it. Imagine just sitting here, having your butties. A little bit close to the edge, I must admit. A little bit rickety. But nice. What a place feels very, very quintessential Lake District. I say that a lot, I know, but it does. I was just thinking this would make a really, really good spring walk. You know, when the days are getting slightly longer, trees are starting to get the leaves and there's lambs everywhere, there'll be daffodils all over the place. This could be such a really stunning area to be in. I think I'll definitely come back in, in spring. God knows where I'm going to be on the Hiking the Wainwright series. <laughs> These people here, the first people I've seen since Hallenfell. Yeah, you get the idea. There's not a lot of people around here at all. It's wonderful. So that was Door Green, and we're heading in the direction of Sanic. The path in a minute is going to head off up onto the fell side. You can kind of see some little grassy trods from here. I want to be going up, up top. 
Let's get some height done. I kind of feel like I've lost everything. Well, I did. I mean, that's Halin Fell there, look. Lost all the height. Yeah, it's time to gain it back. Well, that's nice. The views are starting to open up again. Pulls water and directly in front is Gow Barrow. Nice little bench up here. This would be a lovely spot to sit and contemplate life, wouldn't it? Let's have a look, see what it says. Oh, Peggy's seat. 80th birthday, 1990. Died 2006 at her home in Martindale. So she probably came up here every day and sat with that view. Peggy was a very wise and very lucky woman. And 96 is a great age to get to, isn't it? I do hope that she was able to continue coming to that seat right up to the end. I'd like to think so, I don't know how realistic that is. It's something I think about quite a lot as I'm getting older, start to think about these things and the fact that one day I won't be able to come here anymore. Just physically won't be able to well, walk anywhere, really. Just means that you've got to live every moment like it's precious and that tomorrow might not come at all. Difficult to do with this busy world we live in, but coming to places like this definitely make it much easier without the distractions of modern life, especially when you turn your phone off. It's a bit of a steep one this, you can see it cutting up the side of the fell there. So I'm going to get my head down and get up it. Oh boy, this hill is killer. It's just not stopping. It just keeps zigzagging up. I just when you think you're near the top, you, you kind of get a glimpse of something that's further away. Okay, here we are on the northern end of Sleetfell. This is the first cairn you get to. This is right above Cat Crag, if you have a look on the map. Cat Crag will be just down here somewhere. There was some beautiful light in the valley there then, but very soft. There's a lot of water, a lot of moisture in the air today, so when you're seeing the light hitting the fells, it's, it's not enough really to get a, a decent shot. I just clocked over here, you won't be able to see it. You might be able to see it. I've been surprised by what you can see on here. A little bit of catty cam sticking up way over in the distance there. Very distinctive fell that from certain angles, like a pyramid. Flipping it, weather's coming in, look. <laughs> I think I'm gonna get wet. It's so good to be back out on the fells proper. I've missed it. It kind of feels like I'm back home. I don't know if any of you guys feel the same way when you're up here. It feels like you're home. Again, don't know if you can see it, but over there, just touching the cloud ever so slightly, is Angletown Pikes. We get up to High Dodd, that's High Dodd up there. Now, you remember from the first season what a Dodd is? Dodd is a, a featureless <laughs> hill thing. Really loving this walk so far. I really do love those A to B walks. You know, when you, 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 tr you go out to a point and then you walk back. I love walks like that. There's just something about it. Like you're walking home, you know. So I kind of planned in to get to place fell around about two o'clock if possible. That gives me a good two hours to get down where I've got some you know, half decent light to film. Definitely weather moving in now. You can see it coming right, well, towards me. <laughs> I can feel it coming straight towards me as well. Good. Sick of those flipping sunny walks. Those perfect days and blue sky and midges. I like this stuff. When it gets a bit chaotic and you sort of feel a bit alive. This is what it's all about, isn't it, in the lakes. Wonderful. Okay, I'm just approaching the sheepfold at Low Moss. It's the one that Wainwright mentions in his book. There's a labyrinth of paths that lead away from it. And I can see my first people. So yeah, they're the first people I've seen up here so far. Oh, there's two more down here, look. Look at that. You know, you 
wait for one tourist scum to turn up and several do at the same time. <laughs> I'm kidding. Okay, this is the bit that I was expecting to be very boggy. I mean, just the name itself, Low Moss. <laughs> it doesn't sound like a dry place, does it? I think I can see a way through here, sort of. Yeah, that's not so bad. Not so bad at all, that. It looks like I've got snot on my beard, by the way. It's not. I've just put some Vaseline on my lips. Honestly, it's not snot. <laughs> Just check it out behind. That's High Dodge right there. Can't quite see Hallen Fell at the moment. Oh, actually, no, you can. Probably impossible in this to see it. But just to the left of the double breasts of High Dodge, you can see Hallen Fell. You can just make out the uh, the obelisk. So I'm kind of struggling at the moment to hold this up because one, it's windy, and two, I've got Vaseline all over my hands. <laughs> Not a good combo. But now, getting to the point where we can see the night. This is it here, this kind of rhino horn almost. And you can see uh, Cast Cam over there as well. A little bit of, that must be Striding Edge as well, I can see. Place Fell is literally just up there. You can see the trick point, not a huge distance away now, so I should get there by two. It's places like this that are super special, you know. If ever you're feeling down, got any kind of sadness in your life, work troubles, troubles in your love life, whatever, just getting out into these environments, it's such a, a reset. It allows your mind to think about other things rather than be bogged down by problems and sadness. You're just in nature, enjoying these incredible environments. You just forget about your problems for a little bit. And it also helps to put your problems in perspective a little bit. Maybe your problems aren't as bad as, you know, you, you might think. I know I certainly have, you know, those days like, oh, woe is me. And I get out here and it's like, what the hell was I worrying about? What, you know, why am I fussing about that? It's just not important. It's so inconsequential, you know. And it's these days that allow that to happen. These special moments. Not even necessarily the beautiful days, you know, the sunny, gorgeous days. Quite often it's the crazy wild hard days that are the best days i think i've gone wrong here you know <laughs> kind of walking right into the middle of a bog oh, look at the deer i really hope you can see those they're just three there they are running off i've not got my other camera i would have shown you with with my big camera but unfortunately there they go can you see them Four, I think. Five minutes. Oh, six. Yeah, quite a few. Like I said on previous videos, you know, it's uh, this is deer country. This is where they used to have the big hunts. Anyway, before I was rudely interrupted by those gorgeous deer, I was having problems with navigating this path, but actually, I'm all right. I think I'm on it. But flipping out, this is a really great view. Let me spin you around. Hopefully, you can see what I'm seeing now. You've got this pyramid of the night and the background, you've got Casti Cam as well. Almost mirror it, almost mirroring it. That's a really hard thing to say. Beautiful. Just no flipping light on it though. If that was lit up, if the night was lit up with some side-on shaftage, that would be killer shot because I love the um, the look of Casti Cam in the background. It's very heat and cooper-esque, I think. There is a structure up there, and I don't know what it is. I'm going to check it out on the map now, very quickly. It's a disused uh, slate mine. So, let's go and have a look. Shoved a bit to saw those deer. Ooh. Whoa, that was close. Nearly lost my leg. It was one of those moments that I've talked about again on the previous video, where you're walking off piste, and you sink down, and you, you kind of snap your knee the other way. Ooh, Ooh moss on rock. Not a good combination, that at all, is it? It just slides off with you on it. Okay, I think this is the most anticlimactic <laughs> st 
straight from the path I've ever done. It's literally that little pile of stones. Well, that was a wee bit more than I thought. Not a lot, but something. Okay, let's get over to um, towards the night. I'm actually slightly, because of that little quarry there, I'm actually slightly above the night now. And I don't know if I really want to drop down to it. It's not really that special when you're up close. It looks better from uh, from the lake and from down by Helen Fell there. So I think what I'm going to do is head up back onto the path. Path. <laughs> it's not much of one. And then there's a little cane on the little hill here. Little mobble. And then, it, and then just up to Plates Fell there. You can actually see the trig point now from here. Hopefully you can see it on, the, on this camera. So really not far at all. Which is great, because then I can have my brekkie <laughs> at two o'clock in the afternoon. Yeah, it doesn't actually seem to have a name, this particular gill or beck. It just runs down and eventually just stops. I think it just stops down there in that quagmire you can see down there. It's actually called bottom heads. <laughs> it's a very, very faint trod going up to the summit of Placeville via that cairn. It literally just reveals itself as you approach. That's looking pretty gnarly out towards Hellfellum now, isn't it? Whew. Okay, I'm actually reaching the summit from the other side. I kind of swung back round beneath it and approaching now from the south. Final scramble. Ooh. Hello dog. lovely moment then with the light beautiful I mean you can see how fast the, the clouds are moving you know I just know as soon as I put my head up over here I'm gonna get blown off <laughs> I do hope you can see all this I hope you can see the sun for the clouds there let me try and hold that a bit more steady so this is the second and final Wainwright of the day only two today Helen fell and place fell but uh, I think you'll agree both pretty special oh that's better oh that's much better <laughs> just get out of that flipping wind I mean you can see the clouds whipping across there look they really are I'm struggling to hold this camera still I think this is the spot I'm gonna have a just a quick butty throw it in and then head on down to uh, Bordill Halls <laughs> cups here this is a form of lichen and they're like little pixie cups right I think I've had a quick check for butty crumbs <laughs> I couldn't see any so hopefully not be too offensive now I was gonna get a well you know do the usual film oh well, that's what you can see from here you can see great male little male blah 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 but uh, I, I can't be bothered <laughs> I know it sounds really awful but I just can't be bothered. It got really cold. My hands are like blocks of ice. So I think I'm, what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna just get off and get down towards Bordill Halls because temperatures dropped and I'm at the pub. <laughs> I mean, it's kind of the same views have been seen on the, on the previous season anyway. Like I said, you know, Great Mel, Galbar, all that kind of stuff. But we're just on the other side of Oldswater now, which kind of separates the, the eastern fells from the far eastern fells and obviously we saw towards Hellvellum before but it's all a bit clagged in anyway you can't see anything so 
Right, I've ducked down now because as soon as I get around this corner, it's going to be crazy, it's going to be really windy. <laughs> Woo! It probably doesn't look or sound that bad on this, but flipping egg. There's a really beautiful light around at the moment. Just every now and then, get a little treat from the sun. And this is the moment my microphone died, which is probably not a bad thing because I just had my lunch and I was on a little bit of a sugar high. So the microphone dying, it just saved you about 30 minutes of just absolute gibberish. But I'm going to use this opportunity to draw your attention to the links in the description below. Links to my website where you can buy photographs, merch, or just buy me a coffee. All the money I make goes straight back into making these videos and supports the channel. You're a great bunch and I really do appreciate all the support you've given me so far. Thank you so much. Okay, this cairn marks the beginning of the very rapid descent down to Bordale Halls. No idea what I was talking about here, probably that shaftage. It's a nice path this, very nice path. You can see Brothers Water in the background there. And as I spun round here, I think I was talking about the different patterns, the shadow and the light. Beautiful. Really nice views. It's Angle Town Pikes. I had this foolish idea to run down for a little bit. Not a good idea. And here we are approaching Bordill Halls. All right, just got down to Bordill Halls uh, and the moment and I realised that my battery had gone flat on the microphone. <laughs> So, yeah, all that footage is useless. Anyway, sorry, I'll put a voiceover, which you've probably already seen. Um, this is the Chapel in the Halls. And it's marked on the map, on the OS map, as Chapel in the Halls. And it looks like an old sheepfold or something, or an old dilapidated quarry workings or something like that, you know, quarry hut. But sure enough, it was actual chapel. And people would have come to pray here. I don't know who would have prayed here. Maybe Shepherd's. Strange place to have it, wasn't it? Right on this crossroads. So this is the main crossroads, actually. It goes over to Bannerdale, up to Angletown Pikes that way, down towards uh, Hartsop Village that way, Pathdale down this way, which is the way I'm going to go now. Uh, but first, I'm going to take off some of these layers. I'm absolutely red hot from coming down there, then. Take off and primble off, primble off, take off this waterproof, and take them both off. I'll take them all off. Take all, just take all the layers off. Well, not all of them. <laughs> no, it's not. It's not that kind of channel. And there we go. We can see Ullswater again, Glen Ridden, and you can see the little pier where the ferry started this morning. I don't know what it is, but every time I nearly fall, it's when the camera's not running. That was very close. I just did like a three meter long slide on one foot <laughs> down that grassy bit there. So if you do come here, coming down here and it's wet, just be mindful of that. I just looked up a minute ago, just didn't realize how far I had to go. And I was pleasantly surprised that I'm in line with Krugerbeck Farm just down here and not a million miles away from Patterdale and the path that's going to take me over and bring me out by the school there that's in Patterdale. Watch this, that walk from the school back to Glen Ridden will take about eight hours. <laughs> It'll just be the worst trudge of doom ever. I think what I'm going to do is then pick up the van and drive into Glen Ridden itself proper because the, you know the, the ferry is just slightly outside that's <laughs> just really lazy actually. it's not outside at all it's just down a driveway but i'm gonna get in the van anyway i don't care and i'm gonna go to the traveler's rest Very bleak down here. Very bleak indeed. 
It doesn't actually feel like you're in the Lake District anymore. Okay, just about to cross over the beck. Any of you Lakeland aficionados know the name of this beck. Is it the Patterdale beck? Is it the Glen Ridding beck? Flows from Patterdale, through Patterdale, down to Oldswater. No, this is Goldrill beck. No idea why. Interesting, eh? Little factoid. You knew there's a reason why you watch this. Should be a familiar sight for a lot of you. I'll just cross the road here. Hmm. Smells like pencils. That was the first line I ever said on my first ever vlog, ever. Right here. And my goodness, it does. It smells of pencils. Stick your nose inside a pencil case. That's what it smells like right here. This last little bit in to the village is a little bit soul destroying, if I'm absolutely honest with you. Because I can see where the van is across the way, across the park but it's just not getting any closer. And this is a, well, it's actually all right. It's a nice, nice enough path to walk along, but I just want to get it done now. I'm done. Like I said, I've not got my mountain fitness yet. It's going to take a few walks to get it back. Right, shortcut across the park. I've got a couple of safety marsh bars in here. <laughs> just tucked away just in case that I bonk and I think I'm bonking. So I'm going to have one and, uh, Maybe I have two. <laughs> that depends how I feel. Okay, here we are, finally at the van. Let's get the bag in and drive up the hill towards the um, Travels Rest and go and get a nice cold pint. Maybe even a warm pint, actually. Just a pint, okay. Why, hello there. What? Time in. Well, yeah. <laughs> Could I have, um, mm. have a pint of Australia, please? <laughs> thanks. That's it, thanks, yeah. Quite through, isn't it? <laughs> 